morning. Oh, my voice cracked. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's try this again. Good morning. It's Wednesday, no, to, no, Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. It's 20 to 7 in the morning. We're just leaving Chelmsford. We're heading to Lively. We are picking up a mine cap that is going up to Alamo's Gold in Zubayville or Drubaville if you're English. Which is about halfway in between Wawa and White River, so it'll be a day and a half trip. So yeah, we're gonna pick that up tonight, then, uh, or tonight, today. Drop it off later on this afternoon and then uh, start heading back if the weather cooperates. Because there are a lot of pink skies, the weather is calling for snow. If it's windy like it was last night, the highway is gonna get shut down, I think. The skies are very pink, which means a lot of snow is coming. I really don't know what's gonna happen. It's either gonna be blue skies the whole way or it's gonna be snow the whole way from the suit up. We'll have to uh, take it uh, kilometer by kilometer and see what happens. Yeah, I was really looking forward to this run until I found out it was going to snow. Snow doesn't bother me, it's other people driving in snow that bother me. A lot of people get really nervous in snow and they freak out and they panic because they're like, oh my god, there's a little bit of snow on the ground. Adapt to the conditions. Don't be doing 120 in a snowstorm. Slow it down to 80, 70, 80, 60, you know? The way I look at it is if you can't stop in the way or in the amount of time, like say you're driving 100 kilometers an hour, be able to stop in the same amount of time in a snowstorm so you got to slow yourself down that much right i have never really been a nervous driver i grew up driving in snow so to me it's another day on the road right but to some other people it's hold on for dear life and the four ways are on and they're doing 20. You don't have to do 20 in a snowstorm if you're going to be the one doing 20 you're going to be the one that's going to be causing the accident it's not the other drivers right so yeah so we're going to be taking highway 17 the same way we took it when we went to Thunder Bay, I don't know, a month or two ago. It's going to be an interesting trip to say the least, because this guy is very pink. It looks like, uh, have you ever seen a forest fire? That's what those guys look like. When the smoke and the flames are going up in the air there. So anyways, like I said, we're going to go load up and then we're going to hit the road. Okay, we just went and loaded up. So we have the Minecat. Minecats are really cool machines. They're like tractors that go underground, but there's a lot of variables on them. They can be like a, a water tank carrier, a forklift, and this one that I have on, it's a cable reel. My coworker, I was just talking to him, he said like two weeks ago, he brought up one with a man carrier on it. Like they're very versatile machines. They're super cool and they are heavy. This one that I have on deck is about 19,000 pounds, plus the skidded tires that I have on. They gave me a skid with two tires. You know, they are very, very cool and versatile machines. I really enjoy moving these because they're easy. They're easy to tie down. They're easy to uh, load up, especially when you're deck is dry because then you can just drive them on. They're well thought out, well designed machines. So yeah, anyways, we are westbound for now and then once we get to the Sioux, we will be northbound. The clouds are looking more like they're north right now. They're not really looking west, which could either be a really good sign or a really bad sign because if it's a good sign, that means they're going to stay north. But if they shift, they're going to start moving west and that's where I'm going to be going. But I looked at the radars when I was waiting for them to come out and gave them my paperwork. By the looks of it, I'm just going to miss a small storm by like an hour. And realistically, then I'll make it back to Sault Ste. Marie. And if I can make it to Sault Ste. Marie, that'll be a really nice 14 hour day. Because of the virus, we're not getting as much work. So we're getting sent home early. Last week I got sent home one day, I got sent home at 2.30 in the afternoon. And I'm usually off at 5. So that way, if I if I can pull a whole 14 today, 10 hours yesterday, so I'll put me at 24 hours this week. And that way, if I get sent home like an hour early for the rest of the week, well, that gives me that extra hour that I work today onto my paycheck for the for like the rest of the week, right? So my typical scheduled week is 50 hours. So if I do 24 and then I get 9, 9, and 9, well, then I have 11 hours left for today. And then I have 10 hours added up, technically, right? Still have my 50 hours, which is all I really care about because I can get by on 50 hours, but anything below 50 hours gets a little bit tricky for me. I gotta, you know, figure out some stuff. Yeah, it's quarter after eight. I forgot what the time was called for a second. Superville is about six and a half, seven hours on a good day.
in front of me for a couple of kilometers now. I don't know if he knows how to drive. Every corner he takes, he goes over either the yellow line or the white line on either side. Swerving, and I tried to pass him, and then he sped up and matched my speed when I tried to pass him. Look, there he goes again, Look, over the yellow line. Look at that, look at that. Or over the white line, not the yellow line. Like I was always taught that when you see a trucker trying to pass you, it's common courtesy to slow down a couple of kilometers an hour. You know, just to, to help him get by and let traffic by, right? I'm gonna try to pass him again. Let's see if he lets me this time. There he goes over the passing line again. Like, some of these people really make me question how they got their license. Like, dude, like, look at this guy. Look at this guy, come on. Keep it between the lines, chum. Dude, like, hello. Like, is he texting and driving? Is he impaired? Is he, like... I don't understand what's, what, he's, what he's doing. My goodness. I don't know, to me it seems like it's not hard to keep a truck in between the lines. It's not even windy. Like, if it was windy, I could understand. Because those van bodies are like a sail in the wind, right? But when you're on a straight stretch of road, you know, I don't even know what to say. Like, that blows my mind. And, not to talk bad about the company, but like Bison prides themselves on saying they have good drivers. You see, you see their ads on Facebook all the time, right? Like, come join our team of leading class drivers and all that. But then you see people like that on the road and it's like, all right, um, where did you learn how to drive? And I'm going to go off on a little bit of a rant here because this is something that is kind of deep to me in a way. So the way that it works on Ontario, you have to have your G license and you have to be 18 to go get your class one or your class DZ license, right? I have my DZ because right now I can't afford the course for the DZ because it's $5,500. My issue is that they bring people in from other countries. They're okay to go get their license pretty much as soon as they get here, right? And where it bothers me is that a lot of these people from these countries, I'm not gonna name any, but they come here and they've never driven in snow. They've never driven on ice and they've never experienced like winter road conditions, right? When it gets cold and all that stuff. So a lot of them come here not knowing how to drive on, on, on winter roads, right? And the way that I think it should be is it should be the same as us, right? Because by the time I turn 18, I've had my driver's license for two years, right? Because you can get your, your learner's license at 16 and then you can get your intermediate license. So your G1 at 16 and then your G2, either eight months or one year, depending on if you took a driver's ed course after you get your G1. And then you have to have your G2 license for a whole year before you can go get your G license, right? So that puts you at just about, like if you do the driver's ed course and you do it on the eighth, uh, on the day that it's been eight months, and if you do your course on the day that it's been, or your test on the day that it's been one year, you're sitting at like 20 months. So like almost two years, right? But by the time you do that, you're not 18 yet. So you have to be 18 to get your AZ license. So that gives you a whole two years of winter driving experience. And I think that's what they should do for people that want to come here from other countries and drive a truck for a living, right? Because there is a shortage, I understand that. So it's an easy job for them to get. But I still think regardless of where you come from, you should have a license for two years. That's my personal opinion on it, right? Because there's, right now as it stands, like I work for a towing company and I see way too many wrecks for what there should be. Like I see, again, about the winter road conditions. They drive way too fast for the conditions. And it drives me nuts. It's like you're liable for so many things when you're behind the wheel of a truck, right? And if you go off and you kill someone, well, that's a murder charge on you. It's either a murder or a manslaughter charge. And then you lose your license for the rest of your life, right? So it just, it's something that really irks me.
are just leaving the mine. We're gonna put our foot to the floor. I am heading up to Hearst, Ontario. So essentially what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna head out of Dubaiville. I'm gonna head up to White River and I'm gonna take, I think it's the 631, up to Highway 11. And then once I get to Highway 11, I'm gonna hang right from there. I'm gonna sleep in Hearst, load up in the morning. And then I have another pickup, I believe in Timmins, that's going back to Sudbury. The weather was really, really good. I had about 30 seconds of snow leaving Sault Ste. Marie and it's been sunny ever since. Now it's kind of cloudy a little bit. I have never driven the 631. So I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, yeah. I don't know how I feel about it yet. A friend of mine has driven it a couple of times and he said it's a very windy, hilly road with no cell reception. So let's just hope nothing goes wrong and that I don't need to call anybody. As far as I know, between White River and Highway 11, there is one town and it's Horn Paint. And from what I know about Horn Pain is there is absolutely nothing there. But I'm glad you're tagging along with me for the day. If you watch the whole vlog, if you don't, that's okay. If you do, fantastic, I appreciate it. It helps my uh, my, stati my statistics go, did I say that right? Statistics, I did say it right. It helps my YouTube statistics go up when more people watch the videos, right? As of right now, I have an average of about between five minutes and 40 seconds to six minutes, six and a half minutes of watch time, which is like a fifth or a quarter of my average video length. Just kind of crappy, I like to get that up higher. I know that a lot of the videos that I post are just being watched by friends of mine because I share them to Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, but I would like to get those numbers up eventually, one day. I know I'm just starting out. I can't get too greedy, right? I really do enjoy making these vlogs. But uh, anyways, yeah, so we're gonna go up to Hearst. I don't know how much footage I'm gonna do for right now. I'm gonna do a little bit. Plus, because it's road, I don't know exactly what it looks like. But if there are some nice sights, I will show them to you. coming back in the White River. When was I here last? A month? Rumor has it that uh, 17 is closed in between uh, here and Marathon. So I am gonna find out whether or not the 631 is open. And if the 631 is open, I'm going up that way. But if the 631 is closed, I'm gonna be parking it for the night. All right, there's the 631. Take the next right on down Ontario 631 North signs for Horn Pain. That's exactly what we're doing. So 17 is closed between White River and Marathon. I heard that on the CB a little while ago. And that's one of the reasons why I find CBs so important. And I think that everybody should have a CB and have it on at all times. You know, like, see, say, say it's a snowstorm and there's a pile up. You try to warn other people about the pile up or the traffic jam or something, right? Like I always listen to it. I almost never talk on it. I find they're very important for the simple reason that it can prevent accidents. Not enough people use them, I find, and they're so important, especially like in high traffic areas. Like if you're driving on the 401, if you don't have your CB on and there's traffic jams, right? You won't be able to see it until the last second if it's snowing, especially. I've always had mine on. I don't have it on in town, like in Sudbury, but as soon as I leave the city limits, I turn it on right away. I find they're, they're too important to ignore. But yeah, anyways, it's uh, quarter after five. We have uh, two hours and 45 minutes left available to us. We just left White River, we're heading up towards Horn Pain and then up to Highway 11. I know that there is really nothing to see on this highway city-wise, so there's going to be a lot of scenery again, which is really all the north is. Like, the north is not a very populous area. It's still super nice to look at. I love it. Uh, we're in Horn Pain, <laughs> and it's causing me a lot of pain. Oh, the snow came out of, well, it didn't really come out of nowhere. I seen the clouds and I figured it was coming, but I did not expect it to hit like this. This is, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not really uh, having a good time right now. I really am not. There is still a lot of snow here. One of my friends from elementary school has a camp here. Why? Why would you do this to yourself? I don't understand. This is, uh, whew. Yeah, I am really not having a good time. And the thing is, there is nowhere to park. In 200 meters, turn left on the Ontario 631. So I'm really hoping that uh, it clears up and that it's okay for the rest of the way. I think I might pull in here at the ESO here and uh, check out the weather radars. Take the next left on the Ontario 631. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. And, uh, if there is not, if it is not any better, oh, okay, it doesn't look so bad. 
continue on Ontario 631 for 70 kilometers. That's what we will do. I'm just going to take my time. I don't think, uh, I don't know. I, I really, I think it's because this is really in the middle of nowhere kind of thing. Like we're 98 kilometers from White River and we're 80 kilometers from Hearst and in between there is nothing again. So I think I'm just going to take my time and uh, when the road is like this, this isn't bad, I can handle this, but it's when, when the road becomes snow covered and you can't even see the lines. Yeah, I don't like that. It, in the middle of winter, it's not so bad because the snow banks have sand on them from being plowed, right? So you can kind of tell where you are, like, in regards to the road. But when it's like this, like before, you, you really have no idea. And it's hard to tell where the snow bank starts because, at least when it's sunny, there's shadows, right? But when everything is white, there are no shadows whatsoever. And I find that's really challenging to drive in. Because you kind of got to guess where you are and where the ditch is, right? And right now the snow banks are not big, so they're even harder to find and harder to tell, like where everything is. But yeah, I really want to make hers tonight, so let's just uh, let's just cross our fingers that this gets better. I'm really hoping it will. I'm really hoping so. But if not, I mean, I, uh, if it's not better and half hour 45 minutes I'll find a spot and I'll turn around there hopefully and I'll come back to Horn Bay and I'll sleep at that rest over there because here's a sign what's it say highway 11 68 kilometers okay so that's not even bad that's like if I keep up with this speed that's an hour that's that's not that bad I can handle that okay it looks like the snow's starting to clear up a little bit but I don't know if I'll hold my breath or not whether I'll make it, or not whether I'll make it or not, but whether it's going to stay this way or not. See, like, this this is fine. This, I can't, this is no problem. Like, when it's snowing and the road is bare like this, it's great. I don't mind that. But like I said, it's when you can't see the lines and, you, and the snow banks are small, so you, you don't know where the ditch is. That, and that's what gets a little bit white knuckle there. But uh, I'm going to keep on pushing, and uh, I'm just going to hope for the best.